Hello, my name is Hector Perez. I am the original winner of YCS Atlanta, the 3v3. I'm here to show you Parvanu, the best pyramid in the world. I have Johnny Sidley and the co-owner Patrick Hoban, GG Easy. They are not strong and champion like me because they don't eat like me. Um, 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 um. Okay, that was my impersonation of Hector Perez. I love you, Hector. Hey everyone, uh, this is Johnny Lee here, and uh, I played the 3v3 and got uh, third place alongside my best buddies at Deception and David Flores uh, for YCS Lima. 192 teams showed up, and we finished 13th in Swiss and proceeded to uh, win the next two and lost to the eventual champions, uh, Christian, um, Hani, and um, Arnold. I once again played uh, Tradeco Sky Striker. This was a three feet in tops for me with this deck. Uh, when the Forbidden Limited list hit a few weeks ago and I saw that Widow Anchor went to one, I knew that a lot of adjustments would need to be made uh, to the deck, not just in a vacuum to adopt, uh, adapt its uh, engine to the changes, but also um, in the, the greater scheme of things to adapt to what the metagame was gonna do in reaction to the ban list. Uh, so with both those um, factors in mind, um, here is the updated list from my Fort Worth profile. So, these are just tokens. Oh wait, that was my extra deck. I don't know why. Hey, what was our team name, Johnny? Our team name is Jesus is King. Oh. Like the Kanye album. Okay, so uh, starters are the same, you know the deal. Uh, we have the uh, two Ray and the uh, super, super awesome cards at rotation. Double the Secrets, Magician of Prophecy, Terra's forming a three diagram. Of course, Triple Engage, that really makes the deck. So same 13 starters as you saw in that long profile. Um, then going on to Extenders, uh, we have uh, Area Zero and uh, Disciples and Heritage. And so like when I lost to Raph in top eight at Fort Worth, um, I just kind of drew multi-role along with a bunch of Draco cards. and. Um, I, I had been having an issue of just some some hands had a little bit too many Draco cards, so I, I shaved down that third Disciples and cut it down to the spare minimum uh, to really keep things minimalist and uh, you know just draw as few of them as possible while still maintaining the right amount to still get the job done and win the long game. Um, and so continuing continuing the extenders, we have uh, Hornet Drones. Then as far as additional extenders go, uh, Ignis. So keeping in the spirit of um, what I did with the, the Disciples, uh, I cut third Ignis down to two Ignis, and uh, Noah definitely had it right by playing two Ignis instead of three uh, in Fort Worth. He was definitely ahead of the curve when he thought of that. Uh, one Dynamite, um, double Shark Cannon. So with uh, Widow Anchor at one, you want to add more Strikers spells to the deck uh, so that Area Zero can reliably get you uh, good cards, as well as just the reality that Shark Cannon is a better card than Widow Anchor at, at the current moment. Um, Oh, that's not okay. Um, one engine requirement and a couple of more additional extenders that you've already seen from the previous profile, so I won't get into these cards. Um, and then defense, so one Widow Anger instead of two now. Eagle Booster, um, I actually didn't test this card prior to the event. I kind of just added it on theory alone because um, Colby, who have been playing the deck longer than I have, said that he resolves it a whole lot and it made sense in my head that it probably was a really reliable card though i ended up not um not using it uh, at all like not even once um but uh it in theory it works and so i, I wouldn't dismiss it just because i never uh activated it in, during this tournament and then the th three nibiru from before um for my defensive flight lineup uh, that's still necessary that hasn't changed but one thing that did change is that i found that with one anchor the defense was really lacking in quantity. I wasn't, wasn't drawing into enough defense. So even though this deck can draw a whole lot, I just was not drawing nearly enough defense as often as I wanted to when I was digging deep into my deck. And so there's no point in digging deep into your deck if, if there aren't like really good cards to draw into. And then that, that's where this comes up. There can be only one. I definitely have to acknowledge um, Ed and Colby for talking me into this over um, choosing other cards because um, I had been very much on defense while I was de deliberating what defensive card I should main, and I had I had even gone so far as to um, build my own uh, kind of spreadsheet tool where I developed these formulas uh, and like created this r rather elegant system where you could uh, input any card and how strong uh, it was, 
and um, how frequent uh, uh, each matchup was, like like what percent of the field is uh, X, Y, and Z deck, which I, I got that data from the uh, London results that were posted on stream. And so I, I built this tool where you could just input the, uh, the, the, the numbers for those um, variables, and then it would crunch out uh, scores for all the cards that you're, you're considering. And it would, it would show you, um, based on your assumptions, uh, like which cards have like uh, which um, scores essentially to, as far as like how strong those cards were and so I did this with all the defensive options that I was kind of considering as well as side deck arp options and found some really really uh, fascinating results that were not intuitive to me um, like for instance um, ash blossom and impermanence uh, indexed very high when I use this tool and even when I adjusted my assumptions and uh, underestimated how effective cards like those were even then they still came out in the top three when I was uh, crunching numbers uh, the only one ranked very high as well when I was um, running this tool, but um, at the end of the day, what Ed and Colby essentially uh, convinced me of was the reality that um, out of all these cards that rank really high uh, as far as like their objective index, um, I, I, you want to play the card that just ends the game and just keeps um, boxes them out of playing. And so Ash, while it might score very very high because it's a balance of consistency and power, like what's going to win a YCS is not um, a card that just like stops them for a turn, but rather a card that just like. Uh, boxes them out of the game entirely until they can answer it. So, um, and then sure enough, like the theory that we had uh, very much played out in reality. Like everything that we believed was um, advantageous about playing this card over more generic cards like Impermanence or Ash, as good as they they might be, uh, came true. Like uh, this card definitely performed uh, extremely well. And then um, I might have categorized this wrong in my previous video, but um, this this is a bomb. I'm not sure how I categorized it. My previous video, I might, I might have called it an additional extender. This is a bomb as well, and um, and then this is just uh, the placeholder of Sir Goblin. Barbano. Yeah. Okay. And then what is this? Spell? Oh yeah, spell of knowledge is an engine requirement. I guess I did that in the middle somewhere. And then as far as uh, extra deck, um, a lot of it has remained unchanged. Uh, there's uh, two Hayate, Kagari, Rishizuku, kinda. Did you get an ultimate one yet? No, so I, I'm still missing uh, Kaina and Kagari, uh, uh, Hayate's and one Shizuku in French ultimate. So again, anybody who's watching this, if they have it, like, get in touch with me because I, I I want to um, buy that. Barricade board blocker, um, Ningirsu. Oh, I, I didn't play this uh, at Fort Worth, and I was behind on that regard. I really should have. Uh, it was definitely um, worth playing. Thankfully, it didn't cost me any anything at Fort Worth for not playing it, but it's definitely a card to play. Um, it pairs very well with Phoenix to be able to pop a card and draw a card, and then those two in turn go into Ningirsu. And meanwhile, Barricade Board is adding Diagram or Disciples uh, back or multi roll back to your hand in the end phase. It's just tremendous amounts of synergy and, and it's incredible how much of this of this combo I'm describing can be done under B only one so yeah it's really great um, and then Clara as mentioned before um, super poly targets Dingirsu uh, I played Dingirsu not because um, I really thought it was necessary this time uh, but more that uh, there's there's a lot of freedom with the extra deck uh, I don't think space is tight for this particular deck it could just as easily be uh, a rank four uh, or an additional kind of additional Hayate. Um, I just found that in testing, uh, no rank fours were actually coming up for me. Uh, on, on occasion, Nightmare Unicorn was desired, so it could be Unicorn. But um, yeah, I, I wasn't very particular about this. It was just a last minute, like, kind of just decided this because I had to choose something. Could even be a Chimera Tech. I mean, yeah, I just was not picky. I, I could have easily played this event with a 14 card extra, no problem. And then as far as the side deck, um, again, uh, uh, Noah Bagelman was ahead of me on, on, on this one for thinking to side crow for Fort Worth. Um, I didn't catch up and realize its uh, potency until after the event. So yeah, definitely DD Crow was fantastic. Um, and uh, Dark Ruler No More. Um, I didn't side this uh, at Fort Worth, but the game has changed enough that uh, Dark Ruler No More really performs against your worst matchups, so um, it is you know, very much uh, essential. Um, it's just, just important to remember that you can't do damage after you resolve it. 
Uh, but like the fact that it's a spell just has that much more synergy with engage, which is very much uh, a, a benefit. Um, three cosmic cyclone. Um, this decision, um, I don't know, like back in the day, uh, Pat started this movement where he kind of called MST a shit card, where he kind of pioneered the idea that removal cards um, by themselves are bad. And uh, I, I, to this day, I very much agree that that removal is bad. It's and so this is just a concession. Um, just acknowledging that Striker won the last event and how huge of a threat it was. Um, so uh, I, I resolved it a few times, but I, I wouldn't say it was like the, the best card in the world. Um, Super Poly, um, just again for those really hard matchups, uh, since this deck is not the best going second against combo, um, and I was able to break a board of um, Jackal, a Morphage Sloth, and Vortex Dragon, uh, thanks to Super Poly and, and Ignis against Pendulum. Uh, one mind control. Uh, it seems like a weird number to just have a one of, whereas Ed calls it a fun of. Uh, I went with the one of just because as I was writing out my side out and side in for all the matchups, I just couldn't fit a second in against the matchups that I would bring it in against. I just, yeah, I like I, I wanted the engine cards more than I wanted mind control. So this is just the, the, the fun of. Uh, one ogre. I'm particularly proud of this uh, decision because it's from my um, experiences practicing against Striker multiple times, I, I realized that the one ogre is super clutch. Um, you don't, it, like, because the game goes long, uh, playing more than one, it just gives you diminishing returns. Like, you're going to see that one, uh, like, more often than, than other matchups. And, uh, like, once, you, once, it, once it is in hand, you're guaranteed to stop the multi-roll at some point. And then there's just no way that they can win um, if that ogre resolves. The, the one is really nice. And also just doubles as an answer to a lot of uh, combo decks as well, like Pendulum and uh, certain Guard Dragon decks. And so, kind of like with the extra deck, I found myself only wanting 14 cards to side. Uh, as I wrote my side chart, I just could not find anything else I wanted to take out in any other matchup. So there's nothing else, else I wanted to fit in. So I asked Ed, uh, what should the 15 card in the side be? And um, he said, you know, decide, decide something for, for Pendulum, because it's such a, such a hard matchup. Like, uh, the Master and Demion is very hard for this deck to answer, so um, I realized that he had a, made a really good point. So he mentioned Typhoon, and we're like, yeah, that's brilliant. Typhoon. Oh, David mentioned it? Oh, okay. Yeah, so David mentioned Typhoon, and I thought that was, that was really clever. Um, it gets around, you know, cards like Called By, and it's essentially the impermanence for scales, and so they, they serve it, you Typhoon it. Um, and so I, I thought that theory fit very nicely, so that's why I uh, went with that card. So, yep, that's the deck and the adjustments that I made in light of the new format. Uh, I know a lot of you all were joking about how, since this is a team YCS with three of us, we should do three times the profile length, maybe seven <laughs> hours. But uh, no, no, no seven hour deck profile. Basically, everything was explained in the previous one. Um, and this one's just kind of focusing on the changes. Uh, overall, I just want to share a few impressions of uh, Peru and the 3v3. Um, I think this is a really nice place, and it was really fun to travel here to South America. Um, it's you know been a minute since I've been able to come down here, um, and everyone was really nice, and I was very astonished just at how uh, involved the community was with our side of, side of the world. Because like for instance, Ed had so many fans come up to him for photo photographs and autographs, and it was just really cool like how how um, interested everyone was in each other. Um, so just you know, you, uh, like the way Ed put it was Yu-Gi-Oh is universal, and I think that, I think that's so true. Like even though half our opponents we couldn't speak with them explicitly because of the communication barrier, like uh, Yu-Gi-Oh is universal. The three v three tournament was very very fun. It's um, you know if, if you think topping is fun, topping alongside your best friends is just an amazing experience. Uh, just being able to coach each other, encourage each other. Um, in different ways uh, is a lot of fun. Also, like there's unique mind games that you can come up with that only work in 3v3 formats that don't work in 1v1, and it's really cool to be able to leverage those tricks that you come up with to be able to, um, you know, like fool your opponents, and um, that was a lot of fun to be able to, to try those those moves out, and so the 3v3 enabled like kind of new strategies outside of um, the physical cards themselves to be employed. And uh, being able to, yeah, talk to the, each other through plays and help each other with deck building it was just really awesome because normally you might do that with your friends for a 1v1 by YCS, but then at the end of the, end of the day, you're performing individually. But with a 3v3, like every, all the advice that you give to your friends, like it directly translates into your actual performance, which was so awesome. And it was really cool seeing everyone grow throughout the tournament. Because as much as I played this deck, like for I don't know how many games or matches I played, just so many, like I, I still figured out some stuff by the end of the tournament. You know, it was only uh, through like this teamwork and, and continually like just... Um, looking for ways to improve. 
and uh, Ed in particular was playing a deck that he had not played in real life before, and so it was really awesome watching him grow round after round. And I was joking uh, all day that like whoever has to play against Ed last is in so much trouble because he is so much better by the end of the tournament than he is at the start of the tournament because he just kept learning more and more tricks, more and more elements uh, to to the combos. So um, yeah, we, we were like evolving as the tournament went on. Um, so that was a lot of fun, and there's just so many fun aspects to the 3VT tournament. And so Vegas is coming up next year, um, and, and so yeah, like just for future 3v3s, Konami should definitely keep doing them, because they're an absolute blast. Like I think everyone can attest that it's so, just so much fun to be able to succeed together as a team, and, and, and just carry each other and support each other. Um, and then as far as shoutouts go, definitely shout out to Ed, my rock, who is recording this. Um, and uh, shout out to uh, David. Uh, that is good. Hey, all the time. All the time. Uh, yeah, the, the three of us just have such great synergy, and like the way that we get along as friends, out, like outside of playing cards, it really translates into how we synergize as card players and, and work together and help each other, um, like cover each other's weaknesses and and all that good stuff. And so it was just it's just so awesome to be able to do this with friends for sure. So shout out to those guys. Um, I also want to just shout out um, other people who just contributed. Uh, you know, like No Man is an Island, and I, and I definitely have to say that I wouldn't have been able to, you know, do this well these past three events without um, receiving a lot of advice. Um, so in addition to those I've mentioned already, uh, there's 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 No and Colby and and Ed, and um, I also want to shout out like Pascal who won the last YCS. Uh, he was just, you know, we, we've never spoken before, but he was just very kind in answering my questions about Striker because I knew that because it won the last event that I needed to be very prepared for it. And as I was kind of deciding through what uh, what kind of th thinking through what kind of cards to side and not side, um, his his insight was very helpful. And uh, I, I, after speaking with him briefly, I, I can definitely say that he very much deserved his YTS win. Like it's clear that he thinks very critically um, and very thoroughly about his de decisions and about this game. So thank you, Pascal, for your advice, and thank you to Joshua Schmidt as always. Um, he's been my Yu-Gi-Oh mentor for a long time. Uh, he gave me so much input. He uh, helped a lot, especially with um, the Orcus deck that uh, that David played for us in position A um, on our team. And he just had a lot of insight to share, as always. I mean, I think he's helping me like almost every tournament that I play. So, you know, thanks so much to Joshua for that. And and then everyone else that I got to see and hang out with, all the usual friends like Apollo and Galilee and all the guys from USA and Europe who, who came down and, um, you know, everyone that we see at events. Uh, it was just great hanging out with you guys again. Um, and shout outs to the McComb School of Business and to Patrick Hoban and Parvenu. Uh, Parvenu. <laughs> and Hector, definitely shout outs to Hector. Uh, it's just so much fun, like joking with him. And I, I think Hector's a great example of like, there's that language barrier, but we love to just be, you know, have fun as friends, even though we can't talk to each other explicitly. So yeah, Peru is a really great place. I'd definitely recommend everyone, you know, take the, make the effort to come out to, a, to an international event sometime, because you just, you'll have a blast. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was a great experience. So thanks so much for watching. Jesus is King. Uh, we are super proud of our accomplishment and hopefully next time uh, we will be able to take it all and become champions.